Ronnie Floyd is a leader of leaders with a vision to change the world. The Four Leaders Podcast with Ronnie Floyd is committed to investing, inspiring, and influencing your life and leadership today. With a legacy of investing in thousands and thousands of leaders throughout the years who've led in multiple arenas of leadership, now is the time and today is the day for Ronnie Floyd to invest, inspire, and influence you in a serious and responsible way. So spread the news and share the Four Leaders podcast with others around the world. Now, here's your host, Ronnie Floyd. Welcome to the Four Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Ronnie Floyd. I want to begin today with a question. Have you ever taken the time to think, pray, consider, or even work through what your personal definition of success should be? Here on episode two of the Four Leaders podcast, that's the subject we're going to address. I want to talk to you about your personal definition of success. And please remember, every Wednesday, we're going to be delivering a podcast to you. And I really want to thank you for being with us today. It's a joy to be able to invest in you, be able to uh, inspire you, and be able to influence to whatever capacity that may be. And once again, I really need your help in you getting out the word to other people. Please, when you can, share on your social media platforms about this new podcast, The Four Leaders Podcast. If this is your first time to join us, I want to urge you to go back to episode number one that was released last week. I talked about a subject that very is very important because we talked about what do you do when you do not know what to do? And where do you go when you do not know where you should go? Now, you will be there personally, and you will be there even in leadership of your organization sometimes. We've all been there, and we're going to be there again at times. But I talk about that subject, and I personalize it to let you know uh, a few things that might be helpful in your life because of what God's taught me in my life. And that's why, really, this podcast today is so very important. Your personal definition of success. You know, when I think about that and and you hear that phrase, you may ask yourself, what does this mean? Or you might be interested and you may say, how do I formulate this in my life? Is it long? How how long will it be? Is it really needed? Why should I go through the, the experience of that in life to do that? Well, at this point in my life, and I haven't always been there, I really do believe that every person needs to think and pray, consider, and work through their own personal definition of success. Let me tell you a brief story. Two years ago, I was a part of a leadership gathering, both Gina and myself, and we were a part of a leadership gathering where a friend, as well as one of America's great leaders and teachers of leadership, his name is John Maxwell. He came and he spoke to us um, about a lot of different things in life. It was very powerful, very meaningful. But one of the things he talked about 
briefly in that gathering was the importance of creating your own personal definition of success. Now, I've heard John talk about that through the years, and quite honestly, I knew it, and but in reality, I thought, you know, I'm successful. The Lord has blessed us. Do I really need to have that in my own personal life? Uh, and I just kind of, I heard it, but I didn't hear it. Have you ever done that? I hope that you will hear me today, because today I can tell you, uh, I believe deeply it is important. So when I left that night, and I thought through what he said, most especially that challenge to create your own, my own definition of success, i tell you what I did. I, I decided I was going to do it. I felt God was really moving me to do it. Have you ever had that moment in your life? Something you've heard before that really was never, it was important. You knew it was important, but you felt you were already there. You didn't have to do it or need to do it. Well, I felt the need to do it. And so here's what I did. I added it to my daily prayer list and I continually prayed about it. Every day, I asked God to give me what my personal definition of success should be. Now, what I'm about to tell you may surprise you, but after working through it and continually praying through it, now, almost two years later, I've finished what that should be. Years ago, I can tell you, I could probably write that in five minutes. But it's amazing the way life changes your heart, the way God uses circumstances in life to move you in a different way. And I knew certain things that needed to be in all that, but I really wanted to do it right. And I wanted to do exactly what the Lord wanted me to do. So perhaps what I'm going to share with you today is and will inspire you to at least consider this possibility. Now, I want to walk through this with you. And I, I wish we were together. I wish we were just right across the table from each other because uh, I would love to just converse with you about this. But I think the easiest way for me to be able to do this is just simply to pose for you perhaps four questions that I want to answer for us today. The first question is, why is it important to have a personal definition of success. Now, that is a very fair question, uh, one that is very proper. I think I would answer this in this manner. Life is hard. Leadership is difficult. If you do not define what success is to you, then Others will, or your job will, or you will walk through your life feeling like a failure. You see, what we are always tending to do is comparing ourselves with other people. And comparing yourself with other people who are like you or do what you may do as a vocation or in your vocation, that's dangerous. So let me tell you why it's a danger. It's dangerous. It's because comparison is a killjoy. Did you hear me? Comparing yourself to others is a killjoy. In fact, what it will end up doing is absolutely leading you to a sense of, you're not good enough. 
I'm not being all I need to be. I'm a failure. I don't want you to feel like a failure. And I know you don't want to feel like a failure. I certainly don't like feeling like a failure. And there have been multiple times I have felt like a failure through the years. And a lot of it's been because of what I'm talking about right now. You see, you will walk through challenging times in your personal life, your health, your family, in your vocation, your career, your job. You may walk through financial battles. You may walk through the transition of moving from one city to another city. You can walk through so much of that in your life. But you know, if you're a CEO of a corporation or even a small business, if all you do is look at the bottom line only, the stock price, are the stockholders happy? Are they settled? Then, quite honestly, if that's all that's going to motivate you, you're in for a long ride. Or if you're a coach and all you're concerned about every day of your life is wins and losses, then you're in for a long ride. And I know the importance of winning versus losing. You lose, you may lose your job. You win, you may gain another job. I get all that. Stock price up, it's good. Stock price down can be problematic. You see, what what I'm talking about is you can't always control those things. No matter who you are, any more than I can. We can't control the things around us or the people around us or even the decisions made around us. But what we can control is our relationship with God and what God wants us to be in relationship to walking in and with Him in a successful manner and living a successful life. You see, I believe when you develop a personal definition of success, you will guard yourself from ego, pride, and deep personal pride of your successes or deep grief of your losses. So that's why we need one. Let me go to the second question. Another good question. What needs to be comprised in a personal definition of success? You say, okay, you intrigue me. I want to consider what mine would be. So what needs to go in there? Well, before I ever talk about that, I've got to talk to you about something else because it will influence it in every way. It's what we call your worldview. Your worldview will clearly resound through your personal definition of success. So the question today is, what is your world view? Do you have a biblical world view? In other words, you ask yourself constantly, what does the Bible say and what does the Bible teach? And what I think, like, God wants me to think, because we know that when the Bible speaks, God speaks. And I have to ask you, just you and me talking here today, is that important to you? Do you look at life through the lens of God's Word? That means in your personal life, in your marriage, in your parenting, if you're A student today, that's your relationship with your mom and dad. In your future, what does God want me to do? Whatever that may be, your worldview is critical. So here's what I want to encourage you to consider as as we answer this question, what needs to be comprised in a personal definition of success? The first thing I would encourage you is a biblical worldview. Um, A biblical worldview. God has a word, and that word is in the Bible, and 
We need to see things through His eyes. The second thing that needs to be in it is your personal priorities. You have to decide what those priorities are. We could do a time where we could sit and talk about priorities for a long time. But your priorities are important. Priorities like your relationship with God. Priorities like your relationship with your family. But then the third thing that I believe should be comprised in your personal definition of success success is your life purpose and passion. I mean, what is your life purpose and what is your passion? Uh, Let me readjust the lens for a moment, perhaps in your life. Perhaps not, but perhaps we can. I want you to begin imagining your job or your vocation as your platform to help you accomplish or launch into your purpose or passion. In other words, your platform to accomplish or launch your purpose uh, is your purpose and passion are both of them in your life. Don't see that, you know, my life is about being the whatever you are at your job, okay? But understand that your job, your vocation, where you're going to school, the degree that you're getting, whatever your situation may be, that is the launch pad for you to fulfill your purpose and your passion. So let's go and answer the third question. How long is a personal definition of success? Now, I have some good news here for some of you that are worried about this being some laborious experience. I believe it's one sentence. That's right, one sentence. And you're thinking back to what I just said a moment ago. Uh, I've worked through this over a couple of years, and I finally feel like I got it all set. Well, don't don't take me as an example in that. I'm just telling you that was my process. And your process might be you can finish that in 15 minutes. But I would just want to urge you to pray about it and think through it and consider it rather than just getting a pad or getting on your iPad or your computer and you just start racing in and say, this sounds good, this is what I want to do. It's deeper than that. But it needs to be about one sentence. I say one sentence. It needs to be clear. Clear. Where you know it. And if anybody sees it, they know it. It needs to be concise. I mean, really concise. As few words as possible. But that sentence will be lengthy. It also needs to be concrete. How can I measure it? Can I measure whether that's successful or not? The components that I have in the definition, can I measure those? And it needs to be compelling because your purpose and your passion in life should be compelling. Would you agree? I believe you would. So I want to answer the final question. It's my questions so I can use myself as an example, not as an example of perfection by any means. (laughs) Listen, it's the last thing I have felt. But perhaps some of you are able, and I know many of you cannot because you're driving or you're exercising and you're doing something else today while you're listening to this podcast. But if you could, along the way, go to our website at fourleaders.com or ronniefloyd.com. And when you get there, you'll go to the top area and it will have my name, Ronnie. And if you would, click that and then... I want you to click it again where it says Ronnie's personal definition of success. And I want you to ask in a moment when I give it to you, whether you're looking at it or not, is it biblical? Does it reveal what matters to me? Does it share with you a little bit about my priorities? And does it share my life passion and purpose? You see, my personal definition of success is as, is as follows. Honoring and pleasing God personally. Being loved and respected by my family daily. 
resulting in me investing, inspiring, and influencing others to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Now, yours is not going to look anything like mine. It may be some big anchors in there that are similar. But honoring and pleasing God personally, that's really important to me. I'm very committed to that. Above everything else, I want to be sure I'm honoring God and I'm pleasing God every day. That's why I rise early in the morning and I spend time with the Word of God and with God. And uh, and I talk to Him and, and He speaks to me through His Word. But not only is honoring and pleasing God personally, being loved and respected by my family daily. You know, there are 13 of us in my immediate family now of my children and grandchildren, including Gina and myself. And, you know, I really want them to love me. It's important that they love me. And I want them to respect me. And I don't mean respect like, you know, they have to do this or they do that. No, they just respect me. They think Poppy or Daddy or Gina for her husband, she she respects me. But not only do I want that, but I want all of that. See, that's important. But I, I, I want all that to result in me in investing and inspiring and influencing other people to reach the world for Jesus Christ. You see, as a pastor for decades, I developed leaders. How did I do it? I invested in them. I tried to inspire them and to help them and influence them to reach others for Jesus Christ. I did that as a leader in a large evangelical denomination, whatever my role may have been. This is what I do and try to do everywhere I go. And that's why when we came to this point of of developing a podcast, you know, I'm for leaders. I've been for leaders really almost since my calling. And I deeply believed in the importance of investing in people and influencing people and, and inspiring people to be what God wants them to be. But you know, The question is, can I accomplish my life purpose and vision from that calling and responsibility? That's what your question needs to be and my question needs to be. Whatever my responsibility is, whatever my calling is, can I do this? Invest in others, inspire others, influence others? That was the important question for me. I don't know what that question needs to be for you, but my question was that. So you see... It is so critical to me that all of us understand the importance of developing a personal definition of success. I would love to see yours one day once you have thought about it, considered it, prayed about it, worked through it, meditated upon it. And not that mine should ever be a a role model for you because yours is going to look completely different than mine. Again, maybe one or two of the anchors are there, but you may not have the anchor where you really believe that your role is this or that. I mean, I believe really doesn't matter whether God call me uh, again to be a pastor or whether God call me to lead a ministry, a ministry organization or whatever it is that the Lord may ever want me to do. I mean, it will it will involve me in some way Investing, inspiring, and investing into the lives of other people for Jesus Christ and to reach the world for Jesus Christ. That's my passion. And whatever my vocation is, my job is, that's one thing. But I got to get that done. I'm most happy and I am most content when these things happen, when I know I'm honoring and pleasing God, and when I know my family loves me and respects me, and I spend my time investing in people, inspiring people, and influencing people to reach the world 
with the good news of Jesus Christ. I really do hope today that you will share this podcast with a friend. And I do hope that you will take the time to rate the podcast to help us in that regard. I want to urge you today, do everything you can this week to give a few minutes to pray about this. Think about it and create it in your life.